friends, fellows, countrymen, anybody else out there watching this video, KU fans, Iowa State fans, fans of wherever you're from, what you see here is a virtual amalgamation of Jack Trice Stadium in Ames, Iowa, home of the Cyclones, where the Jayhawks will be going. The one and four, I think, Jayhawks will be going. The important thing is one winner. They've lost every game since this weekend to take on the actually pretty damn good this year Iowa State Cyclones. They beat Oklahoma last week, and uh, yeah, they've got a little little uh, post-game snack, as we say here, against KU this weekend. This is supposed to be a blowout win for the uh, Iowa State Cyclones, so why don't I take you back to a time when there was a big talent disparity between these two programs, that being 2003, when uh, Iowa State was coming off a 7-7 seven and seven season in a humanitarian bowl, that's the famous Idaho Potatoes Bowl, uh, now the, the, a loss against Boise State, ironically, in Boise State's home stadium where they hosted a bowl game, that was completely ridiculous, and uh, KU in 2003 was coming off of a 2-10 and 10 season, which was very bad, Mark Mangino's second season, and they didn't have a lot to shake at you, so in NCAA football 2004, these teams were projected to be completely opposite. Iowa State was good, KU was bad, and uh, in this game that is reflected. However, in the 2003 season, it would be quite the opposite. KU ended up winning six games, Iowa State only ended up winning two, and uh, yeah, of course this game doesn't know that at that point, so the Iowa State talent disparity is far greater than the uh, than the KU talent or the disparity is very large, I should say. I should actually say words that mean something and use them in the proper context. And I haven't even talked about Iowa State, who is now up 10-0 in the first quarter. Not a great way to start the game out, and it's looking like it's going to be a blowout, which, you know what? It's probably how it's going to be this weekend, isn't it? KU trying to make anything happen on offense. We end up running the ball, something that you will never see a David Beatty offense do because we hate scoring points. And uh, I, I think we just really like having a bad offense uh, and just not handing the ball off when, you know, you, you probably could. It's very frustrating watching KU offense. But we get a met, uh, mismatch there on the left side. We go one-on-one -on -one and get a first down into the red zone. So, hey, there is some life. There are some signs of life here on this desolate planet known as the Kansas Jayhawks offense. And I try to run the ball and make something happen. doesn't end up happening. So we end up kicking a field goal. So it's 10-3. to 3. In the second quarter, we are not going to go to halftime completely shut out like uh, you might expect this weekend. I'm really preparing for the worst this weekend. I don't think there is a chance in hell for these Jayhawks, even though there's a great interception on the right side there by the strong safety number 13. Not quite the uh, the strong safety that was making plays back in that uh, NCAA 03 series I was doing way back in like 2010. By the way, the Iowa State head coach completely berates uh, nobody in particular here. I think what happened was that a model did not load, so he just sort of yells at nobody there on the sideline. But hey, you know what? Yell at nobody, yell at somebody. Who cares? We have the ball. And we're in a position where we could score. We're in the uh, on the Iowa State side of the field now with the return. Pretty good return, pretty good blocking. However, what we got to do, I think we should try to run the ball. Looking back at this footage, man, I tried to pass way too many times and then just ended up scrambling with the quarterback. And that didn't get me anywhere. I got a third and one, then fourth and one here. And on the sneak, I do get the first down and then fumble the ball. So with all that fanfare, all that impressive interception return all that sort of thing turnovers happening you know that's the thing you got to do when you're a markedly worse team playing against a markedly better team you have to get turnovers and you have to control the uh, the line of scrimmage on defense and we're doing both of those things here and that's a second turnover on the game there with the fumble giving us the ball at the 20 yard line already in the red zone all you got to do is move the ball 20 yards and you score so we do that on a run play here for about three yards then we give it to the fullback who gets a huge hole in the middle of the field there or I guess the left side of the field there in the middle of the line of scrimmage rather and we use speed with the quarterback on the right side that's a guy named uh, Bill Whittemore who is one of the better players in KU history one of the uh, guys who sort of kick-started Mark Mangino's uh, tenure at the University of Kansas. He was the guy who was making plays in the first half of the 2003 season. One of the better players we've seen wear a KU uniform. He was racking up passing yards. He was winning games with his arms and his legs. We started out 4-1 and one in uh, in 2003 I think we were five and two at one point then he broke his leg and uh, or he had some sort of injury I don't think it was a leg broken but he, he had an injury and never really recovered from it they ended up falling to six and six did make a bowl game though it was a very important game for the uh, for important season I would let's say for the KU 
team and for the uh, the fan base as well. It really energized a fan base that had been dead in the water for about six years after the uh, the Terry Allen era. So this was an important year for the Jayhawks. Would have been an important year from the Cyclones, but they couldn't uh, couldn't keep the momentum up from 2002. And uh, yeah, they ended up kind of cratering. The next year they would be co Big 12 North champions, if that makes sense. They were co division champions. Didn't end up winning the division. It was. Uh, Colorado, who I think went to the to the Big 12 championship game and getting absolutely smoked by the Oklahoma Sooners, who were way better. This was during a horrible era of the Big 12 North, if you remember that. Um, well, maybe not horrible. I guess K-State ended up having a pretty good year in 2003. But regardless, we go for the punt here, kind of playing it safe. I could have gone for the first down, but I didn't end up going for it. And I'm glad that I did because that was a good punt, pinning them back in their own territory. And then the Cyclone quarterback out of the I formation drops back, throws a bad pass, which is intercepted for the third turnover of the game. And this one, he breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle, and then a third tackle en route to the end zone. Completely ridiculous on the short side of the field. The interception returned for the touchdown. And KU's got the lead here in the fourth quarter in Ames in the rain. What did I say? you got to control the line of scrimmage. And I think we've been doing that. And you have to get turnovers. However, Iowa State's got the ball back. Now it's a dire situation. Now they know what they have to do, and all they have to do is move down the field, score, and take the lead. You know, it's one of those things, that's one of those wake-up calls when you're down 7 to KU. You're like, all right, now let's get it going. That's why you see so often KU will, like, score first in a game, and then the other team will wake up and be like, oh, my God, we're losing to the Jayhawks, and then they'll be there and, and completely dominate the rest of the game. And on this play, an ugly play, but it ends up working out for the Cyclones. Almost sacks twice, finds a wide-open tight end on the option pass, a play I never see work out here you see a failed sack here by number 92 and then just a little bit too late from the linebacker and then can't get stopped by either of the safeties and so that's a touchdown for the Cyclones to tie the game up just like that they had about three plays on that drive and then we go here 17-7 in the fourth quarter trying you know we have a late late chance we end up going with the legs there and that actually does get a first down so you know hey running uh, scrambling the ball on the outside not completely the worst option we have a guy open downfield and they just make a good play on the ball that could have been completely game changing had it been caught but it wasn't so we go to overtime and I think that's the first time in this series we've gone to overtime so we go and we do what's kind of been working for us we run the ball with number 30 somehow just a gritty eight yards there we get the quarterback sneak for the first down on fourth and three then we go on the option play which nets us a couple of yards actually pretty solid uh, but then on the next play we would get moved backwards then on third and eight we go to the air and uh, I take it back, I actually don't go to the air, I do the same thing I've been doing all game. That was a horrible decision, should have been more patient. So we have to kick the field goal, and then we kind of back into the second series. We do get the field goal, but we back into the second series. All we have to do is stop Iowa State from scoring a touchdown, but it's Iowa State. They've got a solid offense in this game. Actually, if you play NCAA football 2004, you might pick Iowa State. They're kind of a fun team to work with. They're a good passing offense. This is the Dan McCarney era at Iowa State when they were consistently a solid team. And here their running back somehow isn't even touched en route to the end zone, en route to the win for the Cyclones. So that's a score. That ends overtime out. That would be... Uh, you know, just not a good way to lose is overtime. Overtime is always the most demoralizing loss, too, because it's like, oh, you were so close. And, you know, every play in the first 60 minutes of that game when you lose in overtime gets to be scrutinized. You know, if this hadn't happened, if this hadn't happened, if we hadn't thrown this interception, there wouldn't have been an overtime at all. And uh, yet you lose in overtime. You had to be there longer, too, which is, a, you know, a little bit of an unfortunate thing when you're a Jayhawks fan. This weekend, I'm actually going to be in Ames. I'm going to be watching this game from the uh, from the stands at Jack Trice Stadium. So, yeah, I'll see how it goes. I don't predict it to be very good, uh, unfortunately. It's going to be one of those weekends, I think. Where you, I don't know if it's going to be like 70 to 14 bad, like I, uh, Oklahoma State was a couple years ago. I hope, certainly hope it's not 31 to zero bad like that. Uh, the Iowa State, sorry, I get them mixed up so often. The Iowa State game was in 2013. Um, but it's going to be a bad weather game. That's why I put it, uh, you know, rainy in the game, actually, because I knew it was going to be rainy this weekend because I've been checking the forecast because I'll be there. And uh, you know what? I'm still going to have a good time regardless. Uh, and I hope, you know, hope you all watch. Hope the Jayhawks pull something out. But uh, looking at it now, we got a bad defense. We've got no offense. And that's the entirety of the game. So we're pretty much bad at everything. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'll see you guys there. I'll see you guys next week. 
Uh, have yourselves a great weekend. Try to watch some good football, or if you want to watch KU football, you know, I hope you do too. Always need the support. But uh, as far as I know, that's all. Thanks, y'all. Thank you.